as the coronavirus pandemic spreads across black America. African Americans are getting hit the hardest. Very well under control in our country. You have very few people with it. The people are getting better. Hello and welcome to another edition of Conversations with Eric Williams, State of Black Dallas, COVID-19. The Texas economy is slowly coming back online. Reintroduction of restaurants, movie theaters, libraries, and dog rooms, but not beauty salons and barber shops. In this episode, you will meet and hear from Shelly Luther, owner of Salon a la Mode in Dallas. She is defying Dallas County Judge Clay Jenkins' order not to reopen their salons until May 18th. We will also hear from Cheryl Friday, owner of Golden Touch Beauty Salon and Academy. We'll hear from stylist Chantel Mason as these ladies discuss the issues involving staying closed, reopening, and the discrimination disparities in these businesses that have been shut out and told to remain closed. Well, my first question will be to Ms. Luther. Ms. Luther, can you express to our constituents of the Southern sector in Dallas, your plight and how you got to this point of defying Judge Clay Jenkins and his order for not reopening? Sure. Um, well, basically, um, as I, the pinch that I feel like everyone felt um, was we all got shut down March 22nd and we thought it was just going to be a couple weeks and we could manage that um, and that we were going to get government assistance right away. Um, so we kind of had that feeling of, okay, we can make it through this, you know, just a couple of weeks to make sure everybody's safe. Um, and we weren't really sure what this virus was. Nobody really had an idea and just to make sure everything was good. Okay. Yeah. Let's shut down. Um, the problem was all of this government money that they were promising us um, never came and it didn't ever seem like it was going to come. And especially for small business owners, when we apply for small business loans and they don't even contact us back. And then we find out that it was all given away before we were even answered at all. Mm. Um, that, and uh, they just kept pushing the dates back of when we would open. And I, I continued to watch the news and heard Governor Abbott speak about salons and gyms being the most unsanitary places to open and they would definitely be last um, was very concerning to me. And so I had a lot of my stylists coming to me saying, you know, we've, we've got to work. We can't feed our families. We're already behind on our mortgage. I was behind on my mortgage um, because I paid my salon lease instead of my mortgage because I felt like I wanted to protect my stylists and make sure they did have somewhere to come back to when they finally opened up. Um, so we were definitely feeling the pinch. And I just woke up one day uh, last week and said, I'm just going to open the salon. That's the only thing um, that I can do uh, for my stylists and keep them safe and not going underground into other people's houses to do work just to feed their kids. And so that's how it all started. It just started off with me trying to protect my stylists. That's beautiful. Well, now, what is your plans moving forward uh, after having done this uh, and set the stage for this fight? What, what are your plans moving forward? I know you got some big news coming up on Tuesday. We don't know what the news is yet. Um, I have been speaking with Governor Abbott's office and um, advocating for salons, salon owners, hairstylists, um, estheticians, all of us, speaking about all of the um, sanitation training, and Miss Friday can speak more about this, but um, all of the sanitation training that the cosmetologists go through and that we actually have an entity, TDLR, that inspects us and we're responsible for that and can you know, be fined and lose our licenses for that. Um, so I thought that was a big deal to relay to uh, Governor Abbott's office. Um, to make sure that they knew these things, that we were almost at CDC guidelines. If you just add a mask, perhaps, and maybe a shield between the nail tech, um, our places are more sanitary than a lot of people's houses. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So now moving forward with this uh, court appearance that you have on Tuesday, uh, 
do you believe this will be in your favor? You know, everything's just been um, kind of fly by the seat of our pants at this point because this is an unprecedented event and there's not really any laws that govern something like this. So I feel like they are basically making it up as they go along. And it took someone like me to say, okay, well, what are you going to do about it if we just open? You know, so, um, so far I've been able to keep the salon open and I've actually, um, had several stylists, one from Odessa and another one from another place come and work in my salon because they were at the point of not feeding their families. And I welcome anyone with a style, with a stylist license, of course, legal in Texas to um, come work at the salon because I feel like that's their right to be able to feed their family. Understood. In this particular case, Shelly, you have also some armed gentlemen outside. <laughs> I don't have them. <laughs> I, they're not mine. They're not they, it's nice to have them. Um, they, they're not mine. They actually came on their own and felt like um, this was something that they were passionate about because yeah. of their right to carry arms and protect themselves. And they felt like since I was bringing up the Constitution and how people have rights to, you know, not just to protect themselves, but to protect their family, feed their family, they felt like they should stand up as part of this too. So basically they thought this was part of their fight too, you know, freedom and the government um, just having too long of an arm right now and deciding too much for adults. And we were the ones that put them, you know, the government officials, we put them there. They're not there to tell us what to do. They're there to guide us and help us make good decisions, but you can't just make up ordinances and laws as you please. Got it, got it. Miss Friday. What is your take on what the governor and Clay Jenkins has done uh, to the industry itself? How do you feel about them keeping salons, barbershops closed, all the while some of the other businesses are still yet open? How do you feel about that? Well, my views are the facts, more uh, uh, from a factual perspective as far as when you speak about economy, because I actually educate and also have the opportunity still again on the artistry side, uh, be able to have a, a clientele uh, in daily service in uh, the community. Uh, so when you speak about the economy and shutting us down, uh, coming from the uh, uh, background as an educator, we're, we're, we're very well knowledgeable when you speak about barbering and uh, cosmetology, being educated uh, from sanitation and safety measures, uh, governing, um, regulated through uh, TDLR, which is our governing agency. So uh, we're, we're well endowed knowledgeably with 1,500 hours uh, in that area. Uh, and I can speak uh, on that. Uh, area uh, as far as speaking about sanitation and safety because from the federal and the state we're, we're guideline in that manner so to affect us economically and shut us down I, I piggyback as in, in full agreement with Shelly speaking about how clean and sanitized because our history comes from surgeons and dentistry so uh, we're, we're licensed uh, uh, that we have to present those licenses and proud to stand above and beyond those licenses. Uh, I have six of them, but to, to be able just to get the foundation as a, 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 an adult learner that I educate to have the expectations and becoming licensed to set myself from um, a financial freedom uh, to be uh, able to be in the ed uh, uh, economical bracket uh, for some and for most, you know, uh, that alone, but to set us back, um, it, 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 like Shelly said, it's been a stinger. It's been a, a, a really big stickler for even a business owner such as myself. I have two entities, for-profit and non-profit. So to be able to uh, uh, go and apply for different um, uh loans or, or economical uh, barriers that they have to help bridge the gap from setting us back. The more you set us back, you know, we're back, you know, as opposed to moving forward. And for uh, accomplishing things and goal setting uh, for one in, in society or in life as a whole, you know, that, that, that's a strain. And, and, and just to uh, make a choice to be educated 
uh, for one to select uh, to be educated in any aspect of life, uh, but to balance as an adult learner with all the responsibilities. Um, um, again, you, you, you're sticking us uh, more in, in an economical way, in a psychology way as well. The psychological part is very mental. Let's you know. uh, talk about the economic part there, Chantel. Um, on the southern side of Dallas, there are a lot of economic disparities. Uh, if you were Shelly and you owned a shop like Shelly, uh, mm -hmm. do you think that you would have some type of disparity there versus the north side versus the south side in the same type of situation? The cosmetology industry, why has it been singled out? to not open up. Why, why is that occurring, uh, Chantel? As far as it being singled out, I mean, I, I just think it's an individual. Like you asked me earlier, um, if I was in the South and had a salon open, would I be able to do the same thing as she would? Some people think that they can, but some people think that they can because if you go about it the way that she did, then why is there a problem? It's a right that you're bringing up and you have a right to that. Absolutely, absolutely. And if you go in there just trying to bogart it with nothing, with no lawyer, with no nobody to tell you your legal rights, then you're just going in there blindfolded. And I mean, you don't have no documentation to tell, you know, about your rights. And I feel that it's, it's our right. So what you're doing, you fully... Uh, a support. Uh, I'm very supportive of her. I mean, if I could have had the, I guess, balls to do what she did, <laughs> I would too. I really would, because like, why? Why am I any different? We're both human. It shouldn't be a difference. I agree. I agree 100%. So, in terms of the uh, economic situation that's going on in the southern sector now, we, we've already been impacted uh, from lack of capital and lack of economic development over here. And then you want to keep the businesses closed down and keep people from feeding their families and things of that nature. Now, there are some people out there that want to keep it closed so they can keep collecting government checks and keep getting the stimulus money. Uh, what do you say to those people that want to continue sitting at home and say, well, uh, look, I'm fine. I'm getting my 748 and my 600 a week, plus I got my stimulus check. I don't, I'm not ready to go back to work. I don't feel comfortable. What do you, what do you say to that, Shelly? I say, you know what? That's their right if they want to do that. Just leave us alone if we want to go work. And, and what's your opinion on that, uh, Chantel? The ones who want to go to work, we should be able to go to work. We, our sanitation is up to par. So we believe that we can go in and provide a safe facility for our clients and our stylists. I believe that if people don't believe in it, then maybe they scared they disinfected don't work because they haven't been using it. I don't know what, why, why they're scared, but they need to quit being scared. You go to school and you learn. I was, I went back when it was 1500 hours and you learn about uh, sanitation precautions and all that universal precautions. All you learn all about that your first week in school until your last hour punch in that clock is drilled in your head. And if it's not in some of the schools, then they need to go after those schools that's not doing that. That's not and not after the people that are doing it. We should be able to open and work and feed our children. It's our right. If they don't believe in it, then stay home. Mm -hmm. There you go. Now, uh, Miss Friday, mm -hmm. my question becomes, because of the increased spike, because you know we had, we had the largest increase uh, of cases uh, in quite some time since reopening on this past Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, now, if it continues to increase, they said they might have to shut the government back down. Uh, they don't even reopen uh, beauty and barber shops. What's your plan? Well, I, I, I think uh, as just as well as the other two ladies and many of our uh, constituents, uh, in our industry have said, for the will, um, knowledge and preparation, we already work ourselves in a safeguard manner um, to um, 
be more safe and sanitary to be able to provide a safe haven of, of a, a work atmosphere. And um, it, I believe that the, the, the trust and the preparation of where we already stand for us re-entering for them not to allow, I'm, I'm going to stay more on the not to allow and understanding how we better are prepared and how we are actually operate for us not to allow um, for the sanitation and the protection that we do for ourselves. Um, again, um, our industry has such a vast um, uh, opportunist uh, uh, for one to actually uh, be economically uh, st stable, to uh, be able to make an, uh, an, an affordable uh, above and beyond uh, um, livelihood, uh, economically to be able to afford because of the different facets, uh, even in the skill abilities uh, that we have. So there, there are other options if have to uh, that one can look into uh, being provided to make an, uh, uh, an income for themselves, to provide for their families, uh, if choose. And there is information that can be provided for those who actually need that information. But if not so, we're so equipped, um, Mr. Williams, uh, in reference to safety of self, uh, how we cover ourselves with gloves and masks and even our smocks. Uh, things like that to be able to render the service at hand first and foremost to make the um, uh, income living that we make uh, and the knowledge about the anatomy uh, that our canvas that we actually work on. So uh, we, we have options economically and also uh, for livelihoods uh, to take care of ourselves. And Shelly. Governor doesn't allow. Okay. And Shelly, uh, and moving forward, um, if the government doesn't allow beauty and beauty salons to open back up, what's your plan? Everybody knows my plan. They'll have to drag me out of there. And if they chain my store locked, I will put chairs on the patio. Like they do not have the right to keep my stylist and myself from feeding my family and their families. They just don't. And I will fight till the end for that. And honestly, with the discussions that I've been having with Governor Abbott's office, I think that we will be open in phase one before phase two even starts. Oh, beautiful. beautiful. And, and what gives you that uh, impression because of the conversations that you've had with the government? Yes. And not specifically, but I have not had a conversation with him. It's his team. And uh, James Huff finds the leader of his strike force. Got it. Got it. Got it. Well, in closing, ladies, um, is there any points that you would like to address that uh, maybe we haven't talked about yet that you want to share with the constituents of uh, the Southern Sector of Dallas? I just wanted to thank everybody for all of the support that I'm getting from all of the communities. And I do understand that the South side of Dallas uh, may be perceived a different way than the North side of Dallas. And there are people that uh, might say that I'm not getting in trouble because I'm privileged or you know something like that. Um, I didn't come with an attorney. Um, people, I didn't have the money for an attorney. That's why I opened my shop. People actually came together and raised money for me because they thought they agreed with me in the fight to open the business. Um, so I do want to encourage people to stand up th for their rights, no matter what. And even if I'm leading the way and I'm the one that gets in trouble, hopefully we can get everybody opened up soon and it was worth something, but we definitely have to stick together as one, as a people that all have rights and they're discriminating against all of us right now by having salons shut down and not other businesses, especially pet grooming businesses and other things that have been deemed essential. That is what's discrimination. Do not let them pull us apart from each other. We stand together as one, as a community, as um, educated people that say enough is enough. Right. I applaud you, uh, Shelly, uh, for standing up for what's right, and, and that is what's right. I mean, you cannot force someone to close their business and starve. That's simply put. I mean, that, that's not right, and uh, you are to be commended. Thank you. I would like to say, Mr. Williams, um, if I may, uh, the beauty salons and the barbershops are the pillar of the community. And if nothing but, rather I'm on uh, CNN or whatever news uh, station, uh, there's a lot of uh, 
assurance uh, and, and news information and, and, and things that we can really share uh, in belief to the community for health matters. And I mean, you really, in, in our industry, uh, we have a lot of uh, confiding. And so with, 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 with our business being you know, kind of where it stands right now, um, uh, we're really in a, a, a really bigger servicing needs uh, for us being uh, closed at this time. So um, I, I really um, appreciate everyone's um, hear, listening in and, and um, coming in to hear our point of views of where we stand. Uh, keep us lifted up in prayer because God has the final answer and, and the, and the say-so to it all for us reopening and moving forward. So uh, just continue to keep the pillar close. And uh, there's a lot of pillar talk in those shops and, and, and um, everything. And we have made a lot of impact in, in one's life in the community uh, as we service them. So. Great. Chantel, a final word? No, I just agree with Shelly all the way. So just continue to fight. And um, those who are behind you will have a clean heart with you. They know that we was fighting with you. And everybody else, I mean, they just better quit being scared. Well, I agree with every single one of you ladies, and I want to thank you for your time today and sharing with the constituents of the Southern Sector uh, your thoughts on the issues and how you all are handling COVID-19. And uh, every one of you should be applauded because you are essential. And thank you, ladies, for joining me today. Thank you. It's a pleasure thank meeting you, ladies. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. We need a task force and a marshal plan for the Southern sector of Dallas and Black America to combat COVID-19 disparities. Economic disparity only continues to grow larger.